I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of uh, Sri Lanka. You have the floor, please. Mr. President, Mr. President, distinguished representatives, excellencies, Karem Shalom is anything but a vineyard of peace that it was intended to be. It must be appreciated that this resolution, the resolution 2712, is critical. Its passage alone, however, will not save lives. Only action on the ground will, and that is the need of the hour. The aggression must be brought to an end, Mr. President. We need to steadfastly support that position. The Security Council and the developed nations made the point that they would be willing to help, and they were willing to give, get aid into the hands of vulnerable Gazans, and that initial steps for critical humanitarian pauses have been coordinated with the UN to enable hostage release, help civilians reach safe areas, increase the flow of aid, and ensure uh, it reaches uh, those in humanitarian need. It was also considered, Mr. President, that so much more needed to be done. That includes providing fuel so that the UN can keep trucks flowing and so that medical facilities running out of vital supplies can continue to function. The council members pledged to prevail on all stakeholders uh, to bring about a ceasefire. They made a strong call that the parties to the conflict will protect innocent civilians. The Security Council also made it clear that it will continue to call for measures that will save lives in the long term and ensure that all parties can live side by side, particularly Israelis and Palestinians in states of their own with equal measures of security, freedom, opportunity, and dignity. The present position is well known. We have lost, uh, has resulted in more casualties uh, in, uh, and more human misery. Mr. President, my delegation does not intend to add one more word to the agonizing narrative of human suffering that has been unfolded in this assembly, but would seek to appeal to the higher beings in all of us by leaving you with a few lines from a verse from Rabbi Sheila Weinberg, a community relations professional titled Two Peoples, One Land, in her zest for peace in the Middle East. It is a plea from her, a plea worthy of contemplation as it captures what should be the true ethos. It says, two peoples, one land, three faiths, one root, one earth, one mother, one sky, one beginning, one future, one destiny, one broken heart, one God. We pray to you, she says, grant us the vision of unity and may you live the life of all the worlds, source of all amazing differences, help us to see clearly, guide us gently and firmly towards each other, towards peace. As she puts it, let us all breathe together, breathe life to all that we do to alleviate the suffering of those suffering due to this terrible conflict. Mr. President, may I conclude by reminding ourselves of the deeper message of the lyrics of that beautiful song to what we are currently witnessing, to encourage ourselves to engage in what it takes to stop this conflict, which has the potential to cause unprecedented destruction to life and property, not only in the Middle East, but serious prejudice to the global community. And it goes this way. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone long time ago? Where have all the young men gone? They're all in uniform. Where have all the soldiers gone? They've gone to graveyards, everyone. Where have all the graveyards gone? They're covered with flowers, everyone. When will we ever learn? Oh, when will we ever learn? The words are a grim reminder that we must discourage any aggression in any form from the lessons we have learned. There is no time, Mr. President, to learn. Let's unanimously agree to work without hesitation, put an end to this agonizing tragedy today. Mr. President, we can do it. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka for the statement. And